Hi, this is Katie and Han, students in MCDB 427 Molecular Biology at University of Michigan. Today we're going to talk about an experiment done by Frank Grossfeld in 1987, which answered a big question at the time, which is, how does transcription occur when DNA is complex with nucleosomes? As we'll talk about later, DNA complex with nucleosomes cannot be transcribed, leading to the idea that there are parts of DNA that are nucleosome-free. This video corresponds to the figures 13.19 and 13.20 from Molecular Biology by Robert Weaver. The structure of chromatin is important for transcription. DNA will coil around these blue proteins called histones, which forms nucleosomes. We call this heterochromatin. Due to this structure, RNA polymerase cannot access the DNA and transcription does not occur. So this brings up the question, how can DNA be accessed by RNA polymerase when nucleosomes are present? We now know that actively expressed DNA has breaks in the histones, forming the less dense euchromatin, which can be accessed by RNA polymerase for transcription. The enzyme used in this experiment is deoxyribonuclease, also called DNase, which cleaves double-stranded DNA at the phosphodiester bonds in the backbone. Chromatin completely complex with nucleosomes will be protected against DNase. However, chromatin that is being actively transcribed has nucleosome-free regions and is considered to be DNase-sensitive. These regions are called hypersensitive sites and tend to be control regions. Now that we have some background information, let's look at lo take a look at the experimental setup. First we have this DNA that is completely complex with nucleosomes. It is inactive and not sensitive to DNase. This is just showing a region of the DNA. There's actually lots more. We treat the nuclei with limiting DNA so it is not overcutting the DNA. We want one cut per region of DNA. Since this whole segment is protected by nucleosomes, the DNase does not degrade the DNA. We then re remove the nucleosomes. This is an important step as our next step is to treat the naked DNA with restriction enzymes and electrophoresis the sample in an agarose gel. The restriction enzymes let us make our fragment a specific known size. In this case, they cut at the green arrows. If we don't remove the nucleosomes, the restriction enzymes won't cut, so we won't get that specific fra fragment size. In this case, we get a fragment that is 13 kb, which you can see right there. Now let's take a look at DNA that is not completely complex with nucleosomes. In this example, there's one spot without a nucleosome. We know this spot without a nucleosome is hypersensitive spot for DNAs. We then treat this DNA with limiting DNAs. However, in this case, the DNAs will cut at the hypersensitive spot marked by the red arrow. When we remove the protein and treat with restriction enzymes, this leaves us with two fragments, 6KB and 7KB. We then gel electrophoresis. Since this was on a gel, we can visualize these bands at 13KB on the left and 7 and 6KB on the right. But it's important to note there are other fragments in the experiment that will be on the gel. The DNA we are cutting is much larger than what is pictured here. To visualize the bands that will be informative, we southern blot our gel so there are single-stranded DNA fragments on the filter. We've shown them here, but they are actually invisible. To visualize, we incubate with a hot probe that will hybridize to single-stranded DNA on the filter. Specifically, this probe will be complementary to a region of DNA where the chromatin structure was of interest. We've shown all the fragments on this film, but on a real X-ray film, we would only be able to see the black bands visualized here. So on the x-ray film, we can see from the DNA completely complex with the histones, there was only one band at 13 kb, which we expected. In the DNA with one hypersensitive site, we see a band at 7 kb, as that, as that is the fragment that the probe hybridized to. Since we know the restriction enzyme sites, we can say this hypersensitive site is 7 kb from the restriction site. Now let's think about what happens in DNA with several hypersensitive sites. Using the same protocol as before, initially the limiting DNAs will only cut here, at the left red arrow, as that site is more sensitive to DNAs than the right site. After we treat with restriction enzymes, we are left with a 6KB and 7KB fragment. However, as time goes on, DNAs will also be able to cut the other hypersensitive site, which is less sensitive than the original site. This is shown on the right. So we can see here that not only does DNAs cut at the left hypersensitive site, but also at the right hypersensitive site. This leaves us with fragments of 6, 5, and 2 kb. So looking at this gel, we are using the same DNA. We are just increasing the time the DNA has been exposed to DNAs. On the left, we see bands at 7 and 6 kb from when the DNA initially cuts. However, with enough time, DNA will completely cut the 7 kb fragment at the less sensitive hypersensitive site, leaving us with 5 and 2 kb fragments. It is important to note that this is a population of fragments. We then southern blot, probe, and use an x-ray filter. We see on our first lane, there's a band at 7 kb. We know there's one hypersensitive site, 7 kb, away from the restriction enzyme site. However, when we use the same probe on the DNA that has been exposed to DNAs longer, 
there are no longer any 7 KB fragments left, so the probe only hybridizes to the 2 KB fragment. And know there is an additional hypersensitive site, 2 KB from the restriction enzyme site, that is less sensitive than the site that is 7 KB away. Now Han will talk about how Grossfeld used this method in his experiments. Within the chromosome of globin gene control region, Grossfeld and his colleagues found five different hypersensitive sites with the method we just went over. Limiting concentration of DNAs was used, and some hypersensitive sites are more sensitive to DNAs one than others so more sensitive sites are more likely to be cut. Histone proteins of nucleosome in blue were removed. Restriction enzyme ASP718 was used to identify specific location of each hypersensitive site. ASP718 fragment of the chromosome near globin gene control region is 15 KB. There are lots of ASP718 fragments, but we are only going to probe for DNA in this region with BAM equal fragment of probe. It will bind to that part of the DNA during sudden blood and we are going to be able to map three hypersensitive sites within the 15 KB long fragment. Let's find out the location of each from the data. If we look at the first lane from left of where no DNA is used, it is 15 KB and we won't be able to find the hypersensitive site. It is just the asp 71 a fragment. And now let's look at the third lane where we incubated the DNA with DNAs for 5 minutes. We see three different bands and the one on the top is 14.5 KB. They found out that there is hypersensitive site that is 14.5 KB away from the restriction site. The next biggest band is 14 KB and its hypersensitive site is 14 KB away from the restriction site. The last one is 8.4 KB and it is 8.4 KB away from the restriction site. And in total, they found three hypersensitive sites labeled as 3A, 3B, and 4 from this experiment. Let's look at how they found two more hypersensitive sites. The protocol is the same except that they use bagel 2 restriction enzyme which gives two fragments near the globin gene control region. An equal R1 fragment of probe was used. When you look at where the probe binds, it binds to two fragments of 12 and 5.8 KB. Keep in mind that the probe binds to two different fragments and we will be able to find it from data too. Let's look at the first lane where DNA was not used. We see three bands that are 12, 6.8, and 5.8 KP. We know none of them is any of hypersensitive side. Can you guess why? It is simply because we didn't use any DNAs, and we saw where 12 and 5.8 are from. Then where is the 6.8 KB long fragment? There must be one more fragment of bagel 2 that is complementary to the probe somewhere else in the chromosome. And because this band is not in the globin gene control region, we can ignore it. If we look at the lane that is incubated with DNAs for 10 minutes, we see three bands that represent hypersensitive sites, but it is actually four. The first one is 11.5 KB, so there must be a hypersensitive site that is 11.5 KB away from the restriction site, and it is labeled as 3AB. You might be wondering why in the previous asp 71 a experiment, they found two separate sites called 3A and 3B, but in this experiment, they found one site and they're calling it 3AB. It is likely that in the second experiment, they could not resolve the two bands which they were able to do in the first experiment. If the gel is ran longer, then we might be able to distinguish the two like the first experiment. The next one we barely see is 7.5 KB, which they labeled as hypersensitive site 2. So the hypersensitive site must be 7.5 KB away from the site. The smallest fragment is 4.0 KB and its hypersensitive site is 4 KB away from the site. 
And this is how they found five different hypersensitive sites in the globin gene control region. Let's briefly go over what we learned from this experiment. We can use DNAs to map out hypersensitive sites and its sensitivity. We found five hypersensitive sites within globin gene control region. This experiment supports the hypothesis that hypersensitive sites are at nucleosome free region and hypersensitive sites are present in actively expressed DNA. Thank you for watching and go blue!